I'm Denise. With me, I have John Paul, John, and Daniel. And, and this I'm... is your daily catch up. It got the music there. Yeah. <laughs> nice. As though we planned this. <laughs> We did not rehearse this the whole of last week. <laughs> so good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, very thank you very much. Whether you are here with us at Wisma Atria or joining us from home via the recording. So this is our very first public filming of the Daily Catch Up podcast. For those of you walking past and you're wondering who we are, we are the Daily Catch Up is Singapore's number one English podcast. And we usually film in our studio, but today we find ourselves at Wisma Atria in collaboration with the National Youth Council's youth panels. So today we're going to be talking about something relating to politics and current affairs in Singapore because research has shown that youths in Singapore have taken more of an interest over the years. And this is also reflected by a poll we ran last week. So if you're part of our 11,000 member strong telegram community, and you are here today. Hello. Join you Thank you heaven. very much for joining yeah. us. Wow. And sorry we backed so hard yesterday. We were very scared nobody comes. <laughs> yeah, so I think the main problem that youths are facing is that they have an interest but they are not sure how they can actually make a difference or make a change to make life in Singapore easier for themselves, better for themselves as well. Mm. So that's why we're here today because we want to hear directly from you, which is why we'll be doing a bit of audience interaction. So what are some things weighing on your hearts? What are some things you think the country could do better? And that's also what NYC's Youth Panels Initiative is trying to achieve. So giving youths the platform to be involved in nation-building discussions, better understand what goes into policy making, and co-create that better future with, Singap with Singapore together. Right. Okay, okay, without further ado, <laughs> before people start leaving, can you kick us off with the first question? Oh, okay, okay. We've met many people from all walks of life, like thought leaders, politicians, international celebrities and whatnot, right? How has your worldview kind of changed? What a big Given question. like the experience that we've had, yeah. That's a very big question to begin. One of the reasons why we created the show is because um, we were looking at the YouTube space and there was kind of like a, a gap or a change that we wanted to see in the show. Having like deeper conversations, more real conversations. And so we created a podcast to kind of fill that space. I realized that as we meet all these like big celebrities, all of them also somehow are doing the same thing in their own field. So like uh, Irene Ang. Miss Irene Ang, do I have to address her that way? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Madam, Madam. Like she saw a gap, a gap in her own industry and then she created Fly Entertainment to fill that gap. It, it reinforces and solidifies the, the, the idea that I had initially. Which yeah. is that, yeah, be the change you want to see. Yeah, yeah. I, I think for me it was um, not just because it's sponsored or like we're working together with uh, National Youth Council, but I think <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the guest that I really enjoy talking to the most is actually um, the, the, the public office holders or actually President Taman before he became president during the election run right, when we did that series um, it was something that he said not exactly but it made me reflect and realise something he, we were talking about what he was concerned about what he was thinking about and he actually said resilience in youth and whether the youth today um, was as resilient as, as, as previous generations and he actually talked about his passion for sport and how the lessons he learned about how to take losses how to pick yourself up again and that was something that was very important to him and what it made me realize upon reflecting was how important that there are other people thinking or worrying about things that we should be worried about but we don't have time to be worried about because if we look at like if we're on a commute just before we sleep the things that we're worried about is very um, microeconomic issues that are pertaining to our own lives or our own families whether we can find the right partner whether um, our paycheck can last the entire month but someone out there needs to be thinking about whether there is a walking distance bus stop to every single home in Singapore. Or I don't know about you guys, but I find that I'm actually consuming less sugary drinks because I see a Nutri-Grade C or D. Greeting, yeah. At first, I thought I was super skeptical. I was like, no one's going to follow this. La. Why Usually, this? I drink half, so then D become B. Egg, oh, hey. Egg maybe, water. Huh? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, but it really works. And, and, and that gives me such a, a huge appreciation for policymaking that I didn't have had I not been part of this, this yeah. podcast. So my, my conclusion, right, after... Getting to learn from many of the things that's happening around this world from, from various thought leaders is that Gen Z's or the younger generation of Singapore is very, very poor thing. I feel like the daily catch up wouldn't exist if we could, like, wouldn't be where it is if we didn't, if we started 10 years ago. Like, back then, Singapore was really not as, for the lack of a better word, exciting as it is now. You look at today, right? You, I mean, for me at least, I really empathize with the younger generation that are born into social media. They have their first interaction with their family. And then after that, they have to socialize with thousands of people on the internet via in the comment section if they are not creating. And they haven't learned how to be a human yet. And then suddenly, they never learned to be likable yet. And then immediately, they have to socialize with so people and the world don't like them because of that. And I, I think it's very challenging and when like, people our age, right, when I'm looking at the audience here, yeah, that 
you know, we grow up and people tell us that we live in a time of unprecedented peace. We, my last 30 years of my life, I live in a bleep whereby we go and serve national service knowing that we're never going to go to war. And it's not the same today for the young people. It feels like every other day, oh, we're just going to invade this country. You know, it's, it's scary. And we are told to go to school, then we'll find a job. We find a job, then we go and invest in S&P 500 every month, then we can retire. But even then, you go to school, you study, and then you graduate, and then the whole industry is reaching sunset. On that point, right, we actually did a telegram poll with yep. our community uh. to figure out like, what were the most pressing issues that they are concerned with at the moment. So I, I believe the poll was split between financial security, career, I think digital well-being, and sustainability. Oh, yeah. Yeah, why, why are you laughing? That's no, very important. A, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> Can you uh, check whether NYC has arrived? It is. So, I think it's quite obvious. La. Financial security is the, the top ranking yeah. issue that they are facing, right? Yeah. I don't know it eh, then. Like, I feel like you just got house, you just got baby. Like, do you agree? Like, is that like the most pressing thing? Sure, of course. I mean, like, I think timing our, our life out. stages. <laughs> hey, wait, uh, Oliver need to cover his ears. <laughs> The, the, yes, I mean, the, the short answer is that it is expensive to, to have a house and, and be a parent at the same time so quickly in, in succession, but it's been worth every single penny. Um, the long answer is that I think I understand, I can definitely understand why young people today like shy away or shudder from the idea of like parenthood. Because we, we spend our 20s trying to dig ourselves out of a hole, whether it's because of student debt or because we're living paycheck to paycheck and our salary just isn't enough that we can like save. We work all the way up to our late 20s or early 30s that we finally feel like, oh my God, we're finally treading water. Like I can breathe, I can now travel, I can buy whatever brand I want. And that's also the same time where people are thinking of having kids. And so to suddenly feel like, oh, I'm afloat now financially, to now have to maybe go back to living paycheck to paycheck can be quite a turn off. But what I would say in our brief experience, we've been parents for six months now. I think it's a bit controversial, but parenting can be as expensive or as affordable as you want it to be. Ooh. And uh, let me explain what I mean by that, okay? So, I think a lot of people have the perception that parenting is more expensive than it really is because of two reasons. One is that you most likely might have stumbled, stumbled upon or someone told you how much it is to deliver a baby in Singapore. And if that number in your head is between ten to $15,000, it's not wrong, but it's most likely because you've seen what it costs to go to a private hospital. And there's a lot of perks. You go to a private hospital, you get to meet just that one guy needs, she can fall, he or she, 2024, 20, uh, they can follow you your entire journey. And, and that's a really good privilege to have. Yeah. But if you really wanted... Why it, though? I never saw that as a privilege. Eh. I mean, if you wanted a female gynae, okay lah. Sure. Because like, you can show your, show your cooch to somebody. Mm. I get it. Cooch. Uh. But also, mm. is it not, it's not what the young people call it? Not days. anymore. Like, can I also age? pause you right there to say that in fact, people prefer male gynees because they don't know what's going on. So they're Correct. extra gentle. Uh. And also, most of my friends that went private, when they want to make an appointment, their doctor's not available. So we work around their doctor's schedule as opposed to go to a rotating doctor where someone's always available. Yeah, so, so with that said, if, if you go, speaking of cheaper, if you go via the public healthcare route, like KK Hospital, the delivery fee is somewhat like 4 to 5k. Like, I know that's still expensive, but compared to 10 to 15k, <laughs> it's a lot more doable Sorry, for a high Sorry, John Paul just whispered into my ear, can you just deliver a baby on your own? You don't have to go doctor, right? You actually can, right? Actually can, right? Like, why can't I just go through it without going to the... Is there a skills future course for this? How to deliver a baby? If you've watched Handmaid's Tale, you'll know that it's possible. Yeah. Savings. So, yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah, just. But yeah. I do think that this is a good point to bring up a recommendation from one of NYC's youth panels. So, there was a problem statement that was put forth to them this year, right? That nine out of 10 youths are actually very concerned about the rising cost of living in Singapore. And I think maybe this is the part where I can survey you all a bit, right? How many of you resonate with that? Big space. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> very few, actually. A lot of people are very blessed. <laughs> okay. Will you be willing to share with us? Okay. All right. Let's go. Here. Well, I apologize. Thank you. It's a little bit a warmer. A round of applause for him. Woo! Um, I'm Sean. Oh, this Hi, is Sean. Yeah. Hi, Sean. Hi, <laughs> Sean. <laughs> it's not you, it's me. Eh? How old are you? I'm 44. Right. Yeah, I'm oh. 44. What, what, what are you worried, worried for the next generation that's, that's about to join the workforce or just join the workforce? It will be a red race that my generation actually went to... Um, you know, when we started, I mean, when we started Pauly at 1997, I did not make it for Pauly. I went to uh, Shatec right. because my GCE O-level grades are not good. 
I witnessed, you know, Asian financial crisis, dot com burst, and I thought that, you know, the actually world, the year you were born was the financial crisis. No, uh, the, I'm the, 1980. Yeah, the way you went to poly, it was when yeah, the yeah, financial yeah, correct, crisis. correct, correct, correct. So for yourself, right? I think yeah. you do sound a lot more knowledgeable when it comes to finances and what's going on in the world. How did you get financially savvy? What was it that made you go on this journey of like starting to save that emergency fund of three to six months? I am lucky that my fam my extended family disposed of some private property. Mm. <laughs> wow. nice. right. okay. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. yeah, yeah, correct. Well, you're very honest. But yeah, the, yeah. the the thing is, the funds will not last because I have to say that you know your kid, your kid will need at least two million, three million in future to survive all, all the way to even after retirement. Right. Every single one of us, if you don't have one million to one point five million, right, do not retire. Right. Right. Thank you very much, Sean, for joining yeah. us and sharing with us so honestly. Uh, please head over Thank to the so right much, side sir. and collect your potentially million dollar voucher. <laughs> you are so brave, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay, so I think Sean is ahead of a lot of us in yeah. terms of like his understanding of finances and as, as well as the cost of living concerns in Singapore. And in fact, I think about 63% of youths that were surveyed right, actually showed that they were not financially savvy and they don't have good saving habits. So that's why the, this year's new panel uh, recommendation was to introduce a starter savings plan mm. to support especially lower income Singaporeans in building up three to six months of emergency funds. Right. How many of you all here right, have six months of emergency funds? Hey, you all don't scare us like that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, huh? Why panel raise it? Five. So how this works, right? By the way, if you think that you are not very youthy, Singapore's definition of youth is less than 35 years old. <laughs> so most of us here are not sure. <laughs> qualify, qualify. Yeah, are qualify as uh, youths. And what this this panel is basically is um, the youths of Singapore coming together to be able to work and directly engage with the government to provide recommendations, mm, yeah. even if you don't have solutions. And so what we do is that we we, we kind of share the recommendation. This is the outcome that we're hoping to achieve, and then we allow the government some time and work with them to get the results. Yeah. I was asking whether you all thought it would be helpful for you guys because I think I grew up in a family that was not well-to-do and my family's, my parents were not financially literate. So it's very like hand-to-mouth and then it's a bit paycheck to paycheck. We have a bunch of like loans that we're servicing, etc. Yeah. Yeah. And so for myself to come to the point where I could build up that six months of income, right, took quite a long time uh, and a longer time than I would have expected also. And I think I was lucky to have also then understood this concept earlier than some of my peers who now I see is like they still are spending a lot of money on like traveling. It's still very YOLO. And then yeah. it, it almost scares me a bit that if something happens to them, some of them are not able to quit their job, for example, because they don't have a cushion to land on. Okay, we have a classmate called Jared, right? So, <laughs> like he only recently was able to build this up. And it's not that he doesn't have discipline. Fellow works out, uh, right? He eat the same thing every day. Uh, yeah. And then he... Not even nice, eh? Yeah, he and it's he looks damn sad, whatever he's eating. <laughs> and, it's not, and it's not like he no money or what. So yeah. it's actually right, when we realized it and we talked to him about it, right? It was that it's just he don't know where to allocate. Yeah. And when he did, right, he very quickly was able to save it up and feel like honestly, I think there is a mental impact on on, on him also for yeah. having this. Yeah. yeah. So I think at the end of the day, like I think the recommendation is good. I think it's just how it's implemented. Because if it's some form of force saving type, very similar to like say the CPF program, in which right, like if we looked at it like 15 years ago, I think there was a huge um, maybe discourse around whether it was a good system or not. Mm. But then when people start to realize, right, when the young people, like at least youth of today, start buying their first home and realize, oh my gosh, thank goodness <laughs> I have this for savings to yeah. help me buy a home, right? Then you start to realize and become more invested in learning about finance. Yeah. yeah. So I think there's finance. definitely quite a rabbit hole we can go down if we want to continue talking about cost of living. Of course. And it's something that weighs on my heart as well. But we did want to spend some time today touching on another topic that is quite top of mind for a lot of our young Singaporeans mm. and that is your careers and how to make that align with your purpose and your personal values. It's, it's very funny you mentioned that because uh, also part of the, the recent polls that we did, I think we recently asked our community, again, 11,000 strong, so thank you so much for joining. Uh, join if you haven't. We asked, are you where you thought you'd be in your career? And what was very surprising to me was that across all age groups, the majority said no. Which to me signals that there's quite a lot of job dissatisfaction in, amongst young people today. There's maybe a bit of career misalignment in terms of what you want to do and your purpose. And you so, think so though? Yeah. Isn't it like misplaced expectations, you think? I mean, I think there's a little bit of that. 
But what I did want to actually bring up and, and for hopefully for us to discuss was that, again, we had a, a, a privilege and a myriad of guests that we've recently spoken to. Um, I was wondering whether any of you had any surprising or new insights that you've gained from the interviews we've recently done, particularly about finding your way or like feeling lost in, in your career. Yeah, so maybe I can take that question. So I think maybe to address uh, John's comment a bit or so, I think a lot of the people in our community that responded after the poll and they shared their thoughts, right? They talked about how they felt very stuck because maybe they went down a route and then they thought that after saving for a few months or a few years, sorry, they'll be able to jump out of that and actually go to something that they are passionate about. But a lot of the times they realise that reality sets in, they are trying to build a family, they're trying to get a house and then that just doesn't work out. So uh, one of the quite interesting things that we recently spoke about in a recorded episode was a conversation I had with a skills ambassador. So he was from Skills Future and then he's called Dr. Ramesh. So doctor sounds very legit and so I trust him. <laughs> so he kind. talked about how there's this thing right called burnout skills. And I think when we hear about the word burnout, it sounds very cliche. Like now at, at some point it's like if I'm a bit lazy to go out, I feel very unproductive. Okay, I'm burnt out. But that's often not the case. And what he managed to identify was that there's this deck of cards, right? Or a matrix that you can kind of fill up so skills that you are actually very good at, so something that you're actually very good at doing, but you don't really like to do that. For example, for me, it's admin work. Yeah. So I'm terrible with, say, like scheduling or email, but if you really, if push comes to shove, I'm very good at organizing these kind of things. Yeah. And so if you're having to do a lot of this at work, skills that you are good at and therefore end up getting assigned to do, right, you will end up being very, very drained. And that's where burnout happens. Mm. So it was quite interesting to understand that, right? And then now that I can classify these skills, then what are skills that I am good at and I would like to do? Or that I'm good at but I'm not, uh, I'm drawing this because there's a box forming, there's a grid in my head. <laughs> okay. We will share what doing? the matrix looks like on the community. <laughs> Thank you very much. So that I'm, skills that I would, very much like using but not as good at yet then those are skills that you can build up or see whether there's an opportunity in your workspace right for you to explore those yeah. and then this will help to overcome that burnout yeah i think for me having interviewed all these like like celebrities and whatnot right like yeah. I, I remember talking to quite a few larger local celebrities i think like shake hiker dick lee and whatnot and and we realized that they actually found their early success in their career right not in singapore eh. Right. Overseas. Yeah. And I've always thought about like traveling. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, I've always thought about like working overseas. But scared ma, you yeah. know, go overseas alone, then you like high high risk or don't know what, right? I agree, and I think I, I was very grateful so that I had the opportunity to work in three countries because technically I am oh. working overseas. Oh, yes, you oh. expat. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, he joined the Singaporean club, he's Malaysian, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, so, so a bit of context. So I worked in Malaysia and Australia and I think it was very interesting to um, gain a lot of insights as to how things work around like in different countries and then bring it back to Singapore, back to Singapore for yeah, me because yeah. my, my, my base is here already. Sure. Um, and I think the, the stuff I learned was like in Malaysia, for example, like, um, okay, like in Malaysia and, and Australia, it's not a bad thing. It's that I think it's a little bit more laid back as opposed to Singapore where everything's very, very fast-paced. Everyone wants efficiency. Like if you have a meeting at 5 p.m., right, it means you can cram another meeting at 5.30. Whereas like in, in, I think in, in Malaysia and Australia, they really value like work-life balance way ahead than I think Singapore. Well, you're making um, us look really bad right now. No, no. I mean like this was like 10 years ago, right? Like, like uh, 2013, 2014. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like that was something that I, I remember in Australia, I was working there and I sent an email after 5 because at that point of time, five is end of business. Everyone wants to go home and watch Master Chef. And then uh, I, I couldn't hound it, I couldn't scold it because I sent the email after five. And from there, like, I'm very, very scared already. So then. How did you know? The first time they scold you, you got like, act. Like, no, like, it's okay, boss, that kind. No, it was a. Uh, <laughs> like, you step back, like, like, what, like, what do you mean? Just read it in the morning, la. Right, but it's right. like, no, no, because notification culture, right? And then it's right. like, don't bring, don't bring that hustle culture to this place. So like, um, yeah, I think when I, when I came back to Singapore, I, it's all about bringing your best practices, but also taking away the, the stuff that maybe the bad practices to you. And like, just bring it in your toolbox. So when I came to Singapore, I remember work life being like a huge thing for me and something that I wanted to prioritize. Mm. Um, so then after other all that, you stay in Singapore. Ah. That's crazy, right? I, I can't deal with the pace. Like, it's too slow elsewhere. Like, I like the fast-paced nature of Singapore. Uh, like like but then you still yourself. don't reply email after five. <laughs> but we end don't tell six, people that one. <laughs> five o'clock is still working hours <laughs> for us. <laughs> no, which is why, right? Like, it's so important. Like, thankfully, like Google and Outlook now, right? You can schedule email. So if you really want to work after five, sure. Or after six, sure. Just schedule it so that it arrives at 9am for your, the recipient. 
or for the Singapore culture, even if you send it at 4 p.m., schedule it at 9 p.m. So to you impress look your more, boss. You look more busy. I love that. <laughs> okay. Something that was also mentioned by the youth panel is that there is quite a uptick of opportunities that are present in Southeast Asia, right, for Singaporeans to go overseas to work. But for some reason, maybe they're a bit more risk averse or they don't really want to leave their families behind to go overseas for a whole year or more. Mm. That they don't really go and pursue these opportunities. So the youth panel's recommendation for this is that uh. they want to create like the Singaporean network so that essentially if you want to go overseas, you can probably go to this organisation. They will link you up with the people in whatever country that you are going to so that you are go- you don't go there and then you don't know anybody. You right. don't go there and then uh. you, you like, you know, there's no way to show you around. Yeah, so yeah. they link you with the existing Singapore network that is already there. And I thought that was quite amazing. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's damn good, one, eh? Like I know yeah. the New York one. Then they will take you there for like an internship like half a year or what, right? Then you get to go and go to like the, the, the YouTube site there, go and go to the big companies there, go and see their culture, go and, and it's a really the networking. Uh. Yeah, it's not yeah, the, yeah. the rich Singaporean yeah. go there, yeah. make start their own the business. Gen, day, you know? So you build a network instantly while you get an internship yeah. and then you get all the exposure. Yeah. Then after that, then you straight away got lobang to get a job yeah. there. Or like someone want. to ask the dumbest question from like, uh. when you move there, how many socks do you bring? You know, like, it, it just feels nice. You know, it just feels nice to have someone to ask. But the dude that like in Uzbekistan, then he's alone. He's the only Singaporean there. Then Embassy keeps calling him. <laughs> no, but then he, he will start that network for future. You best. But nobody comes. They ask him enough question, then they don't come. <laughs> no, but it was something that I benefited from as well. So like one of the places like I mentioned that I lived in was Australia. And even though I was Malaysian, uh, I joined the Singapore societies. So like I remember um, it feeling like a home away from home because we, we celebrated like a lot of things together, like Chinese New Year. I remember NDP. We watch the live stream of NDP and then we all sing home. We all sing the national anthem. But you know all these songs. I know the pledge. Oh. So you go for both Malaysia Day and Singapore Day. I never go for the Malaysia one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's now move the conversation on to digital well-being and social media. Uh. Okay, I think a, pe- a few people wrote their eyes. <laughs> but <laughs> I know for coming, that uh. usually when we cover these topics, we are usually tasked to talk about scams or upskilling and or terrible social media trends that you should stay away from if you're a child. So... But these are not the most interesting topics, but nonetheless quite important to talk about because a lot of us are chronically online, including myself. Scam's so real though, that's my first thought. It is. It's such a real thing. My father falls for one like every three days. What, what scares me is that I think in the past, we will just have to be very careful with what we put out on the internet and then what we consume on the internet. But I think because of social culture, it could be you are just celebrating your anniversary, you bought a car, you bought a house, and me scrolling just your happy moments can give me depression. Right. Wow, that one scares me. And I think what was recently very surprising was that when I spoke to some of my female friends, they, they don't even, they are very careful with the pictures they post because it's very easy to take that image and then run it into some deep fake software and then their nudes come out. So they don't, the way they post, sometimes they would still cover even though they are fully dressed, not sexy dressed, because there is websites that you can simply link, you put a link inside, and then you generate. No, so this actually was so quite. You, uh, you do this, right? Wait, how you know so, so much? They told me. <laughs> they have anyway, the website is called Triple W. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've been on, on online for so long, right? Like, we get a lot of hate comments and we kind of learn do how we? to navigate it. I mean, okay, la, like throughout. La. Yeah, 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 yeah. Over the course of, like, I don't know, 10 years, right, that we've been online. I don't know, it never really affected me. Eh. E- even at the beginning, man, people. Say you like your hair. Ah, you know. Okay, 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 okay. The My most offended, right? Or what, My know? most offended one is physical appearance. <laughs> we'll put a picture up yeah. here for those of you yeah, watching yeah, online. Yeah. Because <laughs> if, if they always talk about, oh, like, oh, he looks like a mean guy or what, right? I uh. feel like you don't know me, you know? But I feel like, wow, he's so ugly. It's like, you have seen me. <laughs> <laughs> that is your assessment of me. <laughs> and it is correct. <laughs> <laughs> that one gets me every time. So. No, I agree that there are yeah. like two kinds. So one is, I think if people <laughs> critic us, because I, one of the comments that I get quite often is that the Singlish accent people don't think is too nice to listen to. So they yeah. don't like the way I'm pronouncing certain things or maybe I talk too fast or I cut off the guests at a time where they wanted to hear more of that story. So that's the main criticism that I get, which I feel like it's okay because it's constructive. Mm. Yeah, mm. But if people hate on me as in things that I cannot change about myself, which I have gotten comments about, then those do get to me. Though. Usually I just Those get open or don't get? Get. Oh, okay, so I open my one. notes app, then I type a very strong reply, yeah. and then I just think I won in my head. Yeah, hey, yeah. that's not bad. And that makes me happy. That's a huge amount of restraint. <laughs> I think early on for me, it, like both types affected me quite a lot. Like it would like keep me up for like four or five nights kind. And then after a while, like you just see so many that it just 
drowns out after a while. Yeah, so, so right, we, I think we did one more poll with the Telegram mm-hmm. community about like social media, like whether they feel it's harmful to them or not, right? I mean, majority say yes lah. Ah. Yeah. And I think that there was one, one particular comment that stood out, right? Which is that they are more concerned with the frustrations that the algorithms, for some reason, are just like working against you. Yeah. So you are just being like fed, like for example, scams or what, or like the wrong, the wrong messages and the wrong things are being taught to like, for example, younger people that are on social media. Yeah, and I think that that seems to be quite a big issue, I guess. The problem statement for this, like, this, this topic, right, is that social media platforms, again, majority of people have encountered harmful online content. Okay? Yeah. And youths are generally aware of the existence of safety mechanisms. But are true. But are often <laughs> unaware and not confident about the considerations that go into the operation of these mechanisms. They basically but, know the mechanisms are there, they just don't know how it works. Yeah, so example, okay. I think, uh, example is right, that for example, <laughs> example, 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 example. You have an example? <laughs> okay, yes. So Instagram, I get some DM from uh, Lilu 0569 asking me to buy fake sneaker. Ooh, right. So I report, correct? I report as spam or whatever, right? Two days later, I get three more other accounts coming at me. So then, what is the point of like, you know what I mean? Right. Of reporting. I think that's the frustration. Manpower, uh, the politics time. Uh, you mean there's somebody going? Yeah. yeah. No, hey, so my, my friends that, that work in big tech one, right? The, the spam and the violent things we see, uh, those are the 1% that pass the filter already. Oh. So the, the remaining 1% that we see, those are all already human-based moderation. Right. From my understanding, uh, like 99% is algo-based removal already. And also, right, like the, the, the three extra DMs that you get, right, it's because other people are not reporting. So because of your report, right, that account didn't go to anybody else. Okay. You're doing your part. It's just Bless that you. everybody needs to do their part also. So you're welcome. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. So the recommendation Thank is you. that uh, they want to have an accountability-based approach so that people can better manage their interactions with users and, how, and the kinds of online harms that they report. Ooh. Which I believe essentially is the case of Making the internet less anonymous. It's my guess. Oh, yes. So, like, doxing everybody. It's using your sync pass to create Instagram accounts, which I fully endorse. Hey, whoa. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. we talked about this before. 100%. Just have that one account. Like, you, yeah. If certain it, times you want to do some legal stalking, understand? Like, you want to check your ex-girlfriend. Okay. That, that kind of stuff. You want to, you know, and you don't want to get caught. <laughs> you, can, you can create a ghost account, but that ghost account cannot comment. Okay. Oh. So you only loiter. And cannot leave the shit emoji. Correct. Ah. Okay. Just only that one thing. <laughs> no, but what if your haters are from overseas? Ask them come here. Ask them come here. That's true. <laughs> That's a China situation. We meet them at the airport. So. <laughs> wow, but don't you feel like Singpass back ba- social media accounts are a bit invasive? No. You like? Mm. <laughs> so that you know exactly who is giving you that shit comment. Or it will be a deterrent. Is that what you're saying? I want to know who hurt him. <laughs> I don't know actually. <laughs> I scared. <laughs> <laughs> I do think that it's quite an interesting concept because I I feel like when people have to put their name to something, right? Yeah. Then they're a lot more scared to say certain things. And something that I thought was quite interesting, which was a mechanism that also Instagram um introduced, was the mute function. So that if you think that there are these posts we are seeing that you are automatically just comparing yourself to this person. It could be a yeah. friend. It could be like, you see, oh my God, this person gets to travel all the time. You know, it could be, you see, this person has a really rich boyfriend that drives them around. And then you feel like you don't really want to see so much of this, but you cannot block them because it's awkward. Right? Then next time you see them, then you're like, oh shit, I don't follow you on Instagram anymore. Yeah. So mm. there's a mute function. Mm. Or worse, you get the, why you unfollow me? Uh, <laughs> you, that sounds personal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I do think that there are quite a few interesting... Uh, things that the social media platforms are putting forward as safeguards. Yeah. I, wait, I should mention as a disclaimer, right, is that the recommendations, neither, neither the recommendations nor the government, right, is thinking of making sync pass based social media. Okay, it's yeah, our yeah. interpretation <laughs> But of if the you all vote for me. <laughs> I, I got another recommendation. This is nothing really social media like rules, right? Is your <laughs> friend, girlfriend, right? Or your friend's partner, right? Only after they marry, then you follow them on social media. You're here before. Because if they break up, right, then... You, Very you awkward because you still follow, but then oh, to true, unfollow, true. then is the friendship fake, you know what I mean? Oh. So how yeah. long after should I wait, right? After the breakup, to test whether they'll get back together, ma? you never know. You no, cannot trash talk them don't too soon. Don't put yourself in that situation, just don't follow until marry. Or you just be, be real, like unfollow when they break up, when they get back together, follow again. La. Sorry, <laughs> my friendship is based on your relationship. Yeah, we saved the best topic as the last topic. Sure. And that is environment and sustainability. Uh, uh, our favourite. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a waste sorting belt Right to to recreate content, ma. <laughs> <laughs> I 
haven't seen and this video, but sure. All the all the rubbish that I was sorting was already from recycled bins, ah. Okay. And we still have to throw away ninety percent of it. And there are tampons inside. There is there is bra. Is Wait, people throw their tampons in the blue bin. In the blue bin. No, there was one person that we interviewed previously <laughs> regarding recycling, right? So he, he runs the waste management facility and he said, right, there has been a dog carcass that someone has thrown into the blue bin before. Oh my... Oh, but maybe recycle... That sounds pretty recyclable. Yeah, though, recyclable. Actually, me. He wants so, the dog back so to life. What he's saying is it should be in the green bin. La. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think you should contact the cremation services. <laughs> okay, okay. Correct, correct. <laughs> I, I don't think you should throw your dog into a bin. Like. I, I do agree with what John says though because maybe not about finding but I think to have like some form of financial mechanism because um, something that we maybe spoke of also off camera was that I am now incentivized to go and buy the big recycling bag or the reusable bag right? because now I have to pay for plastic bag. The only problem but is that I always forget to bring the recyclable bag. So now I, at home, I have like 20 recyclable bags. Because <laughs> time I go out to buy five dollars. No, so I think I was quite pleasantly surprised because I did run a poll regarding do people in Singapore recycle. And I'm pleasantly surprised that majority of people do. Lies. And, huh? Really, man. How you know? Because <laughs> <laughs> the ones that say no, never, never vote. Uh, yeah. no, because I have a when it's convenient they try right, which right, I right, feel right. like good effort like good effort right okay, so, okay, okay. so the problem statement comes in here in that people do recycle but the fact is that there are a lot of people that still don't know what will contaminate your recycling pile and that is screwing up everybody else's effort yeah so, it, it's such a huge barrier though I feel like I want to recycle you have to wash your trash right but to wash the, the <laughs> cans is quite huge but I've been making effort like I should say that before I became a dad honestly the recycle thing right, was so hard for me to, to get through like, it was such a big barrier. Then, literally, the day Ollie was born, right, I literally recycled a can. I was like, Whoa. yeah, Lord, but since I, then, I think I need to build a better world for the next generation. And right. since then, like, we've been very, now. very disciplined. Oh, wow. Wow. Like, there will sometimes, like, be a can, like, gas come, right, then cans throw in the wrong bin, right, I will take out and then put in the recycle bin. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. I respect you so much. Nice. So, if you really want to recycle, be a parent. Right, 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 right. <laughs> That's the, the barrier to entry just shot up. <laughs> then you go back to cost of living. <laughs> Actually, right, if you just fill the dustbin with water, right, then all the recyclable stuff throw inside. Then clean already, right? The weight though, we got a weight problem. They are problem them thing. Uh. But isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> just recommend only. Yeah. Right. So this is why we are, we are not the officials <laughs> that are doing these policies. No, so I think it's quite interesting because there are certain newer BTOs, I believe, that they actually have a recycling shoot. Yes. So, you know, you yes. go out to the common area to throw your trash now, right? They also have a recycling one. Yes. And then yes. what I feel like is missing is that I think there are still people that are confused about, for example, can styrofoam be recycled? Actually, you cannot. 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 Uh, wow. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 50-50. <laughs> it seems like the correct answer. <laughs> the real panel is recommending to simplify recycling labels. Essentially, they will put the symbols like what can be recycled, what you can or cannot throw into this right, bin. Right, right. And I think overseas, people are already doing this. Yeah. So, they make the bins transparent. Also, so you can already look yeah, in yeah, and yeah. see what is getting thrown inside. So it, it feels impossible, but look at how we put the ABCD grading on drinks. Yeah. Real quick, overnight, yeah. everybody has. Okay, but I should say, right, the symbols need to be very, very easy to read. Because now, right, if I want to wash my clothes, right, I see the symbol, I also don't understand. This one is machine wash, this one is can iron yeah. or not. Okay, so and with that, we've come to the end of today's filming. It was hopefully fun and engaging somewhat. <laughs> Whether you're here with us or watching this online, a big thank you for joining us and spending your afternoon with us. And of course, a thank you to NYC for making this event possible. The NYC youth panels have been doing great things and it's exciting to also see that youths are engaged and involved and want to shape the future of Singapore to be what they want to see. Mm. Yeah. So for those of you watching online, do check out also the links that we will be putting here as well as down in the description box below. That's all from us. We will see you back online for our next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>whether you have that self-realization or that self-reflection. Yeah lah, I was just very lucky. Honestly, this is something that I think a bit about, right? Because I, as I feel like when you become a parent, your life starts revolving around your child. There are a lot of parents who haven't had the chance to fully mature or to, or to fully grow themselves. And then it just, that, that growth just gets stunted there. And then you just stumble along the way as your child grows. Uh, I asked because me and my girlfriend are like 18 years old now, right? Then we got... 
talk about this kind of thing and then sometimes we wonder why people don't want to have kids. Uh. Then we feel that we, we were thinking like, eh, if people, if, because what Dan said really like caught my attention, like why he suddenly start caring about environment when he got kids? Then we were like, oh shit, maybe it's because, then I also look at myself like, when I have a girlfriend or when I have kids, I'll start caring more about my finances. I'll start caring more about this kind of thing. But then when I'm alone about myself, right, I just don't care. I spend whatever I want. I, I, so, I think a lot of it is because, right, like you talk about like when you have a girlfriend or if you have a kid, or all these function like mirrors for you to look into your own life yeah. and see the areas that you want to be better. Yeah. Right? So interestingly, yeah. there is a psychological term for this. It's called wow. temporal landmarks. And Ooh. basically, it means that when there are significant life events that happen, so for example, getting a girlfriend or becoming a parent, right? We as humans suddenly feel the need to wake up our idea and make certain positive changes such as taking care of our finances or suddenly having a, a more worldly view about the world. Yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. so thank you very much for joining us. Do thank you, sir. You. And enjoy your Mate. maybe million dollar voucher. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Most likely 20 bucks. Hey! Oh! hey! Have a child. Ah, the rest of you all only have 20 dollar vouchers, okay? <laughs> there was only one that he took. Yeah, 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 there was only one. Um, what is one, um, one advice you will give to youths in Singapore? I think it's two things. One is that if you're 18 now, both financially and career-wise. Right? And it doesn't matter if it, it, it sticks to plan or not, but set what your goals look like for five years and 10 years. And it doesn't matter whether you hit it, it as long as it gives you a sense of direction. And by the time you hit five years and you evaluate, right, it will give you a better sense of, am I where I want to be or am I lost? And I think when people don't set goals and they're just living life as it is, right, it's easier to get lost because you didn't know where you were headed to in the first place. I looked at my life building up to 25. So no matter what I do, it is guided towards where can I learn the most. And then now that I have hit 25, then I, was, I felt a bit lost. I was at a huge crossroads because I don't know what the next five years look like for me or what I'm trying to achieve in the next five years. Yeah, and then that prompted like a huge amount of reflection for myself. Yeah, the future is so scary. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Five years is a lot. <laughs> it's true. Here's mine, okay. I've come to the realization that nobody knows what's going on. Let's say the CEO of, of DBS, right? Probably one of the highest paid CEOs in Singapore. You think he has an idea to disrupt banking in his back pocket, but he don't want to tell you? He don't want to tell his team? He only want to tell you in 2029? No, like everyone's figuring out. We all don't know what's going on. <laughs> so, with that knowledge, I think there's power in that you don't overthink life. Like, life is, you try your best now. And I always say this, all the dots in your life connect when you, I mean, I think about this, but I feel like Steve Jobs said it first and he said it a lot nicer. But all the dots in your life connect when you look back. And, wow. and I found that in my life to be true. That everything, like the fact that we're sitting here today, one of my first clients was NYC. You know, and all these things all led up to this moment. And now if you know that every big moment in your life is a culmination of all the little dots that you have ever come across in life, then the way to game it is to make sure that you have a lot of dots in life so that when they eventually come together, right, the mighty explosion will be a lot bigger than the explosion that you will ever imagine for yourself. The tangible advice is that to go and experience life. Like, go and meet that person, go and learn that random skill, go and buy that random book about law. And when all this will eventually connect to you one day, and then you'll be how surprised on how everything comes together. And if this doesn't make sense to you now, I really look forward to the day where five, ten years down the road where this will definitely make sense to you. And then hopefully it wouldn't be you won't be too old in life. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you can Thank also you. head to the site. For your twenty dollars. If there's another voucher. million dollar voucher, give luck. <laughs>